Welcome to your Mama Moon podcast with interviews and tips from real life for your pregnancy journey from belly to baby. We are Tessa and Nina, and we are passionate about motherhood. Our goal is to give you tools towards a beautiful and empowering experience during labor and a smooth entry into life as a mom. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, so today we are very happy to have Zania with us. Uh, Zania is a baby wearing consultant from Adapting to Love. Uh, she's also a mother of two boys. One is three and a bit and the other one is a um, couple of months. So yeah, the easy one. Uh, even another reason why we are so happy that uh, that you made it today uh, to share with us what you are doing. Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit uh, uh, about uh, baby wearing uh, expertise. Uh, before we go into the topic, if you can let us know, please, a bit about your background. How did you come to the baby wearing? Um, yeah, thanks for having me. I learned about baby wearing from my cousin, Fabienne Cortons. She is a baby wearing consultant of seven years in Limburg and Belgium. And she first started wearing her daughter and I saw how beautiful and practical it was. And so I started learning about it from her and I just knew when I was pregnant that I would want to wear my first child. Um, I've also had the opportunity to travel and work in many countries around the world. And I've really gotten to see and learn about different baby wearing traditions and different cultures. And so just the beauty of it really fascinated me. So when, um, when I started wearing my son, you know, at first it was just something I wanted to do because I knew it was, I thought it was very beautiful aesthetically, but also that um, it's good for the baby and such. But I really realized after a few months that in my day-to-day -day life, it was incredibly essential to me as a tool. And um, so I started telling my friends about it and I started telling family and I just wanted to share it with more and more people. And so eventually I decided to get certified and expand my reach by becoming a baby wearing consultant. Um, Otherwise, my background is kind of varied. Before motherhood, I was a biologist and an environmental lawyer and um, also a teacher in various capacities. So I think I kind of use some of that background to help me in how I share and teach baby wearing these days with families. Very cool. It's uh, amazing how much different experiences you have and how much expertise and how many different fields. Like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's super beautiful. I love that. Um, and it's, it's really cool to see that you're bringing that all together um, while sharing your passion about, uh, about baby wearing. It's so cool to see that it's something that came from your own experience and, and from your own, uh, your own conviction, right? Um, so, I mean, if you're not familiar with the concept of baby wearing, uh, you would think probably about the aesthetic aspect that you also mentioned before. And I do think it's, it's super beautiful if parents wear their babies. But can you tell us a little more about it? Because I do think that there are a lot more benefits to wearing your baby than just looking nice, right? Yeah. Yeah, um, I really view baby wearing as an early human adaptation that allows our species to live upright on two legs and to birth our babies so prematurely. So that's super geeky, but that's kind of how I, I see it. And I really <laughs> truly believe um, from a scientific and personal viewpoint that our babies have evolved to be worn, that it's in their nature and ours, and there is scientific and biological evidence to back this up. So when we look at the benefits to the baby, we see that it's this really natural thing that soothes them, that calms them. Um, we also know that it's good to, for us because we get two free hands. Um, but often when we discuss baby wearing, the benefits are really focused on the, the baby and how good it is for the baby, that it helps to regulate their systems, their digestion, their temperature, their heart rhythms. We know that babies who are worn frequently cry less, they're calmer and easier to soothe. Uh, it also helps promote breastfeeding, motor skills, immunity. So there's all these benefits that are easy to research on Google. But what we don't talk about very much is the benefits to um, us as caregivers, to the parents. And I think that 
baby wearing helps us regulate our lives as much as it helps a baby regulate their lives. There's a lot of benefits to caregivers um, from a mental health standpoint, as well as a very practical day-to-day -day standpoint. It's, I think, the reason why almost any culture around the world has their own unique way of wearing their baby, because it's actually quite essential. And it still remains an everyday practice in many cultures around the world. So just to talk a little bit about that, um, when we get stressed because our baby is crying, you know, we're kind of rushing around trying to get fit our life into those moments between when we're holding our child. But when we are wearing our child, we can really relax knowing that we're providing our baby with what they need and then we can go about doing what we need which is you know making lunch or making a cup of tea reading a book typing an email and i think that that subconscious feeling of knowing that you're providing for your child while also accomplishing your own needs it really builds a sense of independence and confidence that's very important for our mental health because when we first become parents, we're very much thrown in the deep end, right? And it can be really overwhelming. Uh, additionally, there's a very physical response that happens when we wear our babies. Uh, mom and dad both produce a lot of oxytocin when we wear our babies from the cuddling effect. And so it's actually, baby wearing's becoming a tool prescribed by doctors now in some places to help combat postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression when you can't when you don't feel like you're getting a bond with your child, you can actually force that in a way by wearing your child, which helps you feel confident that even if you're not feeling good as a parent in that moment, it's you're doing the right thing. And then the oxytocin also helps actually bring about that bonding. Um, it also, oxytocin is really helpful and important in breast milk production. So it helps promote breast milk production when you wear your baby. And of course, it helps us have that energy we need to be the parents that we want to be. And so I like to encourage people to think about baby wearing not just as a, um, an option to get two free hands, but to take care of ourselves. So for example, if you want to go for a walk with your baby, you can choose putting your baby in the stroller or wearing your baby. And I know some days you may just be totally exhausted and it feels like a lot of work to carry your child on your body. But, you know, putting your baby in the stroller is always a totally fine option. And there's nothing wrong with it. But I'd encourage everyone to think for a moment that maybe taking the making the choice to wear your baby and get that extra dose of oxytocin on that walk is going to do more for you for your own self care in the hours to follow for the day and give you more energy than um, not. So if you look at it that way, um, it really is a, a very valuable tool. And I think that when we lost it as a European culture um, in the 1800s, we lost a lot of those benefits to our mental health and our independence. I love that uh, you mentioned the oxytocin. <laughs> I mean, as I keep the birthing practitioner, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, yeah, it just keeps on coming back, and uh, yeah, it's it's beautiful, and uh, yeah, I also recognize it fully when you say it about all those hugs and cuddles. And I think it's totally. also really cool. Something that just came up uh, when you said that, I'm, and I think there is also research backing up that dads can can develop the same levels of oxytocin than mothers can if they just have enough con contact and bonding experience with the baby. So in that context, um, baby wearing becomes to me when, you know, when you say that it helps to produce oxytocin, it, it becomes also a whole new, there is a whole new dimension to it, right? Uh, to also bond between, or forge that bond between dad and, and baby and not only mom and baby. Yeah, I'm, I'm really passionate actually about getting dads involved as much and entirely as possible because they really can be involved as much and entirely as they wish to and as is needed. And I think baby wearing is a tremendous tool for that. Yeah. And is there a moment where, um, when can we start wearing our babies? Do we need to wait, you know, like with, let's say with yoga, I usually tell my moms to wait like six weeks. Do we have a magic of weeks here or? No, no. In terms of the babies, babies can be worn day one. The moment they're born, they, 
could be worn. Um, you know, you want to do skin to skin with a baby. So if for whatever, I mean, yeah, lay in bed and just cuddle your baby. You don't need to put a carrier on, but you know, you could in theory wrap your baby up. Um, it just depends on the type of carrier you have because some carriers are not newborn friendly or they just won't fit such a tiny baby or be supportive enough. Um, but many carriers will. In terms of mom's body, um, you need to respect your healing. That's really important. And if you're carrying any weight at all, you will feel that in your core and your pelvic floor. And so my general advice is to wait to only carry your baby just a little bit each day as you're healing, just to feel how it feels on your body. And if you have any pain or discomfort, stop. And then just as long as you don't, you can continue to wear a little bit more because you continue to gain strength and your baby is gaining weight. And so your baby is actually like a weight training exercise that's continuing to grow with you and your recovery. Um, but back to dad or partner can wear baby right away. Very cool. Um, I, I actually at that time at the experience because I had a C-section and then I started to wear it. It was a little uncomfortable because the, the, you know, the belt was sort of right on the scar. It wasn't really good. And also the weight of the baby was heavy, but then, um, we got a different carrier and it was a whole different experience. I think there's also a lot of value in trying out different things. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, if you, if you really start to, to look into carrying your baby and, and really early that I think it's brilliant also for, for the skin to skin contact and for really being able to have a lot of contact with your baby while also being able to do other things. Um, but um, if I do that, how would you need uh, to know really, early or how how would you know really early which which rep to use or which carrier to use do you do you get a lot of consultations of pregnant moms and do you look at their body then already or do you wait until the baby's there or how do you try all these different uh, rep, reps and, and and carriers as well yeah i, I mean there, there's no one perfect wrapper carrier necessarily but because people have different requirements for their own bodies and their lifestyle and also the dynamic of how different the body of one partner is to the other in a family um, different carry and different learning styles too so different carriers are, and wraps are going to appeal to um, different families so I, I do really love doing consultations with expecting families it lets them see what is out there in terms of options and then um that can help guide their purchase and then they can practice with their carrier and gain confidence so that once baby arrives they're a lot more ready to wear their baby um there, there is a lot that can be learned before baby arrives things like c-sections can change a little bit about wearing but not too much um some carriers would maybe bother like the incision site of a, of a cesarean, but many won't, especially if you wear them high enough. So, you know, and in the end, a lot of us end up with more than just one carrier is the reality. But um, I do love to work with people before they've purchased a carrier because often um, I'm called in when they already have put a significant amount of money into a carrier and I can see that there may be something very specific about that carrier that's not working well for them, but we're going to have to do our best to make it work because that's what they have, unless they're open to buying something new. But it's great if I can talk to someone and help educate them before they've already made that investment and that decision. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot of knowledge uh, to share, uh, Zania. And, uh... I, I also think, I mean, knowing, let's say, all the consultations and, and that you can, you know, share it. I, I love what you're saying, you know, about the meeting already with parents uh, before they got the baby and, and also, let's say, once they either before they purchase the carrier or when they have the carrier. Um, still, I can imagine that that's not the profession that everybody is familiar with. So uh, do, do you come across a lot with a question, for example, what the baby carrier consultant is doing? And yeah, uh, what, what's, what's that profession about? Is it something that you come across a lot? Yeah, I think people are surprised that they would need a consultant to help them with a carrier. You know, they're sold in a box with a set of instructions and it's like, mm. why can't I just buy this object and start using it like my, um, my phone or my 
my dishwasher um, or that it's like putting on a pair of jeans and um, that would be cool if that was true I, I think baby wearing consultants we exist for a few reasons um, one is that there's just so many carriers out there like we just discussed right that you it's hard to know what's the right one um, there's also the reality that it isn't so simple to just use them. You can follow the directions and use them, but that doesn't mean that you're using it correctly on your body or for your child. And there's a lot of troubleshooting involved. And there's just so much that we can learn um, with hands-on help that makes it a lot easier. Um, so often I'll do a consultation and someone wants help with a buckle carrier, but then they also are kind of interested in a wrap. But often I hear, oh, but it's just really overwhelming. It's too confusing. I don't think I'll like it. But then I show them how to use it. We practice once. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that that's really not that hard. I, you know, I tried to watch this video on YouTube and I couldn't figure this out or it just, I was confused. But then just having that interaction, some peer support and encouragement and then some expert teaching makes it a lot more um, tangible. It just makes it a lot easier to do. But I think the other reason why all of us exist as postpartum professionals is that we live isolated as parents now, right? We live on our own and we have these babies and we become parents on our own. And so we don't learn the skills of breastfeeding, baby wearing, um, and everything else beforehand or with anyone in our immediate vicinity that's showing us how to do these things. And so we're, you know, once upon a time or in other cultures, you have that support around you. Still today, there's so many people that grow up learning to wear their nieces and nephews or younger siblings. And so by the time they have their own kids, they're already years into developing their baby wearing skills. So I think that um, as doulas, as lactation consultants, as baby wearing consultants, we're trying to replace that intergenerational knowledge that we've lost um, because of our lifestyle and the way that we live as a society. So that's, I, that, I guess my dream as a baby wearing consultant will be that I won't be needed one day because we'll all go back to teaching each other how to wear our baby. That's uh, that's beautiful. <laughs> and uh, no, but it's also it really makes a difference in a sense. Like wow, you. Um, I mean, it's it's so true that we indeed we are kind of isolated right now. That that we don't have this direct uh, teachings. Let's say, uh, and it's beautiful that there is those there are those professions that are helping us around. Uh, and it really makes a difference because also I myself uh, remembering also the consultations that. We did uh, for Miko that that made a basically a huge change when it comes to when we started traveling with him uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Asia. So it was yeah, yeah, definitely makes it makes a difference. Totally. I I also remember when we started carrying our uh, our boy. He was the first carrier we had. We didn't even know what was going on. He was just screaming his head off. We put him in, and two minutes in, he started to scream like he would never for anything else. And then we thought, okay, so maybe he's tired. So we tried another time and another time and another time. And we got really, really desperate also in a way because we had this carrier and it just wouldn't work. It was so difficult. And I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that it might be the carrier that makes a difference for the baby, right? So then eventually somebody just lent me their carrier, which was a different brand. I, I still up until now, I can't really see the difference in the two carriers, but all of a sudden, our baby boy loves to be carried and loves to be worn around. So I do think make, you know, getting, uh, getting you in early, getting a, a baby wearing consultant in early makes all of the difference to make it a smooth and enjoyable experience and not just somebody screaming up right into your ear more or less. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that all the pictures of baby wearing is like that perfect, calm, blissfully sleeping baby. And so when you first put a baby in and they're freaking out, you're like, this isn't right. They hate it. They're in pain, you know, but the, I think just like everything else with a new baby, they do cry and babies cry. And it's not because they're uncomfortable usually. Um, it's usually because they're, they're unsure and they need to learn that it's a safe place. Um, sometimes a different carrier can make a difference, but often it's, it's also just the experience of practicing it and staying in the carrier until they figure out that they're, they can relax. Cool. So, I mean, we often come across the idea that 
that babies don't like to be in wraps or baby don't uh, babies don't like to yeah. be worn actually so is this yeah you know, the fact you just mentioned is that why so it just takes yeah. them a time to get used to it or yeah i think there's a few and far in between babies that um that yeah maybe really don't like being worn like they may not like the really tight confinement maybe those are the same babies that really hate being swaddled but in generally in general babies like being held and they like being close to us and that's important for them and for them to relax and so baby wearing should replicate that we like to say that it's not the carrier that's holding your child you are holding your child you're just not using your arms right like you are your presence is there holding your child the carrier is just facilitating that around you and that's how the baby should feel um but yes new babies do cry um when they first go in carriers it's incredibly common and even with the experience that i have my baby would cry every time i wrapped him for the first few weeks but then stop after a few minutes and sometimes it's also because they're fighting sleep because as you bring them there they realize they're falling asleep sometimes it's because it's a feeding cue right to bring your child to your chest and so if they're even a little bit hungry they're just going to start rooting and fussing and want to be fed um but yeah it's it's really common that they cry and all we have to do is reassure them and soothe them in all the same ways we would normally soothe them. And we don't have to take them out of the carrier to do that. We can bounce, we can dance, we can sing. Um, we can go for a walk with baby in the carrier. You can bring your hands in the carrier and rub baby's back. Um, you can kiss baby, you can put on white noise, all of that. Just keep them in until they calm down and then you can take the carrier off on that positive note. And then you'll have a positive association with your carrier instead of a negative one. Hey, and um, so we talked about how early we can uh, start uh, wearing our baby. I'm also curious, how long do people wear their baby? Yeah, there's no age limit to when you have to stop wearing mm -hmm. a baby. Um, often the toddler tells you that they don't want to be worn anymore. And um, that's, you know, they want their independence. And so I think that also goes against one of the big baby wearing myths of, oh, your baby will never walk or will never want to be put down if you wear your baby. But it's absolutely not true. I mean, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find a toddler that doesn't want to show you and that they can walk and to run off and to go explore. So I think it's a tool that families continue to use for a long time if it's a regular part of their lives. Um, if it's not a regular part of your life, then often the reason people stop wearing their toddlers is because they feel too heavy for them to wear. Um, the most important thing to do is if your child's feeling too heavy for you to wear and you want to keep wearing them is to put them on your back. It's a lot more ergonomic for your body and a lot more comfortable to wear your child on their, your back. But um, there are carriers that are made for toddlers, so you can size up. If you're using a wrap or a ring sling, it will never age out. It will fit a newborn on day one and it will fit a child um, for yeah, as so long as you can possibly my, my wear them. My next question is yeah. curious. And I like if you, for example, if you start with a certain wrap, can you? like continue or do we yeah. need to upgrade like you upgrade with a bike but <laughs> yeah yeah you have to with some with like a buckle carrier you usually have to move on to a toddler size mm. carrier at some point just to keep like it's just going to be a bit too small for them their legs will be hanging and it'll come down below their arms and and such but for wraps and ring slings it'll just keep fitting them which is really beautiful cool is there there's something else that I was wondering and now with older uh, I think with, with toddlers I'm still wondering is there like a, a disadvantage to um, to the development of baby spine or baby sort of motor you know all the the the, the, uh, the the physical aspect to it because I think a lot of times you hear people saying yeah but if you carry baby for too long it will be bad for their you know for their back or for whatever else for their hips or for the development of I don't know what do you would you second that or do you say there's no reason to be afraid about the, any of that no I, I mean honestly I would say that there's something to be afraid from not wearing your child because if you're not wearing your child, I cannot imagine that you are carrying your baby in your arms 24 seven, which means you're putting them down. And of course you can put your baby down and we all put our babies down, but 
all the devices that we have, car seats and swings and, and prams and such, um, are not actually really optimized or developed for them to have the healthiest positioning of their hips. Um, we see a lot of babies with flat heads, um, with torticollis, because their, their necks are being kept in a very specific position. Baby wearing is, we see that babies are very much evolutionarily designed to be worn. They bring their knees up. Baby wearing in an ergonomic wrap or carrier has their knees up in a squat M position, which is really healthy for their hip development. Um, we, we know that their back is naturally curved in a C shape and baby wearing allows that to be maintained versus laying flat on their back does not. Um, and we also know that they need to be able to move their head and their neck freely to develop those muscles. And so when you wear your baby, it actually counts as tummy time because they're engaging their, their muscles and they're, um, they're able to lift, they're lifting their head and looking up around. So there's no limit to how long you can wear your baby. It's absolutely the perfect position for them to be in, unless if you have a non-ergonomic carrier, um, which would be wearing your baby facing outward. Um, that's something you don't want to do for a very long period of time. But that's only when you wear your baby looking out. As long as your baby's looking in on you on your chest or on your back, um, it's ergonomic. And yeah, I think it, there's so many benefits to it. And you just don't get all those benefits when the baby's not being worn. So there's really no limit. That's really cool. I think that's super reassuring because we, I mean, at least I know here in, in Germany, we, we get a lot of question marks around that. Yeah, definitely. Cool. So, wow, we, I think we've learned so much. I love that. <laughs> I mean, it's like 40 minutes in and, uh, and uh, all, my, all the myths, we've done a lot of myth busting around, uh, about baby, around baby wearing. I, I yeah. do think that's brilliant. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Zianya. I think that, um, yeah, super, super valuable information. Um, so if, you, if we were to round up and you, you'd have like, you know, a few minutes left to share your golden tips about baby wearing, what, what would that be? What do you, you know, if there's very limited time, what do people need to take care of for sure? Uh, well, I, I think just to remember that this time in your life and your baby's life is so short that, um, you know, it's just a few months or a few years. So just enjoy it. And if you're wanting to wear your baby and you're uncomfortable or frustrated with your carrier, just get some support. There's so much support online. There's so many resources online. Find out if there's a consultant in near you. Um, if you live in the Netherlands or Germany, you definitely have a baby wearing consultant near you or several. Um, that's probably one of the highest densities of baby wearing consultants in the world are in those countries. And get some help because I think most people are surprised that with a few small adjustments to just the carrier they already have, it can already be made way more comfortable and easy to use. And otherwise just changing which carrier they're using could make an even bigger difference. Nice. And uh, any specific uh, advice for the warmer weather that's coming our way? Yeah, that's a common complaint that even I have for baby wearing because putting two bodies together is warm. There's no way around that. Um, but I, I find that baby wearing the heat that you get is a lot more bearable when you have your baby on your back rather than on your front. So we can't put a newborn baby on your back generally, um, but once your baby's sitting, you can put your baby on your back. And that's a wonderful way to feel a little bit less um, kind of just weighed down by the heat on our chest. The other thing is to just make sure you spend enough time in the shade, um, hats, are great big sun hats and also you can put a little microfiber cloth you can make it damp and put it between you um, to help mm. with a little bit of cooling nice. okay. thanks so much i i really really thank you for this conversation because I, at this interview it's great that you made time for us so we know that you've got the the, the toddler around and then the baby <laughs> coming up so it's, you know we i think happening. as moms we always have to sort of juggle so many things at the same time yeah. um how and where can people best reach you so if they have questions do you can they can they reach out to you or do you do online consultations as well where can they yeah. find, where can people reach you find you 
I'm doing, I do online consultations. Right now I only do online consultations, but hopefully in the next month I'll go back to doing in-home co in home consultations. My business is Adapting to Love. So adaptingtolove.com, Adapting to Love Facebook page, or Adapting to Love on Instagram. You can find me on any of those. I'm pretty quick to respond to messages. I'm always happy to answer questions. I love getting questions. I don't charge to just answer questions. Um, in general, I don't charge for my knowledge. It's just my time, you know, if I'm coming to your house. But um, I'm, I'm very happy to answer questions. And when I do consultations, I'm always available afterwards to my clients for follow-up support on WhatsApp and by email or video chat um, whenever they need. So uh, just reach out. I'm friendly. <laughs> and thanks really for having fun. me you guys this was fun yeah very good so we'll absolutely make sure that we put all the, all your details the, the website the facebook page the instagram page okay. in the show notes so everybody down there you will find uh, how to reach Zanya and uh, follow her as well because there's some amazing stuff always going on especially on your instagram i love to, I love oh, to look at that so um reach out if you have any questions Thanks a lot, Zanya, for Thank being you. with us today and sharing all your knowledge and your wisdom. Um, and um, yeah, we hope that uh, everything goes well with your little one and the big one Thanks. and um, hopefully have you around soon again. Thanks so much for listening to our Mama Mama podcast. We would love to see you again, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new episodes. Also, for more information and to stay up to date, check our website mamamoon.me and our Instagram and Facebook.